dangerous the enemy's camp You still do miracles You will do what you say
Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Church Kids Show. I'm Charles. And I'm Sophia. This month, we are learning all about how Jesus gives us peace. Raise your hand if you felt some of God's peace this week. Now, take that hand and give someone the most peaceful high five of your life. Peaceful, it's gotta be peaceful. I didn't make any noise, though, so. It was peaceful enough. But we hope you are enjoying learning about the peace that God can give us. Speaking of peace, Let's bring out our pieces of materials we're gonna need for today's competition. Nice try on that pun there. Not sure if it quite lined up, try, but nice try. I did. This mm. competition is going to be called Back to School Gift. We will be given an assortment of dollar store supplies tasked with creating a gift suitable for a teacher in under three minutes. The most creative gift made wins. Okay, bring out the supplies. What do we got? Wow! Ready? Steady. Ready? Spaghetti time! Spaghetti! You sticky? No, I guess not. <laughs> hey look, teacher, I made you a pipe cleaner set! It's where, did, a, where did my open bag my, it's a My gift is a bag of pipe cleaners. <laughs> I'm using sparkly red. Uh, you can keep those ones. Okay. Oh, this is not going how I planned. Oh, this is kind of painful. One minute and 30 seconds. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you calm down there. You, you quit that announcement. I need a new one. I need a new one. I guess I should have started with this. <gasps> I can't get it open. I can't get it open. Go, yes. Okay, are you, do you need that bag for hyperventilating too? Ouch, these pokey, pokey pipe cleaners. Woo, this is not looking at all. One minute. One minute. One minute. That was the fastest three minutes of my life. I'll tell you that much. You will see Wait. what I'm making. Oh, and you will quickly appreciate my genius. Ouch, this hurts. <gasps> you stop that pipe cleaners. You quit that. No, Sophia is not working. Ten seconds. Phone <gasps> a friend for assistance. Five, oh, this hurts. Four, Make sure. Ow. Three, Why don't hey. we have any pins? Two, one. Uh, down. Wow. <gasps> Do you want to know my, what I made? <laughs> Can you guess? If an was, ornament. If it was a little more round. Is it an ornament? No, but you're kind of close. An apple! It's an apple! Oh, that's cute. <gasps> Look at my apple. It looks scrumptious. It looks like something evil. <laughs> uh, warning, church kids, you've got a bunch of pipe cleaners trying to squeeze them down. It's painful. I scra Yeah, eat the apple. Wait, that's for my teacher. Jeez. This is... Fred the Friendly Helper. He uh, helps with lesson plans. Anytime you need to get the kids' attention, you just wave Fred, and Fred goes, Hey guys, I need your attention, please. That is, a, that is some big promises. All I can promise this is an apple. He can wave at you. That looks like he's scratching his face with his face. <laughs> <laughs> What's the verdict? It's 100% Sophia. Fred? Fred the Friendly Helper. Do you not like nutrition? You guys don't like apples? Fred is the winner. Way to go, congratulations. Oh, congratulations, Fred. Hope you can uh, live up to those promises. Well, in light of that, let's go see what game you're playing for today. Uh, if it's pipe cleaners, I'd suggest not squeezing them together because, uh, ouch, these pokey assistants. Oh, this hurts. Ouch, this hurts. Anyway. For many years. Have fun. Yeah. 
What's up, church kids? And it is game time, and the game we are about to play is called Beanbag Head. So I need two contestants to come up, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna have a beanbag. They're gonna stick it on their head. Now, there are two buckets on the ground. You have to start from one bucket, and you have to make your way to the other bucket. Only using your head, you have to drop this beanbag in the bucket. If you drop it, you have to start all over. You can waddle, walk, sprint, fast walk, whatever you need to do to get this beanbag to those buckets. The first person to get five beanbags in their bucket wins the game. The game begins in three, two, one. Last week, we talked about the peace of Jesus. God loves us so much that he promises us peace when we trust in him. That's right. We know that God is peace. So the closer we draw to him and trust him, the more of his peace we can enjoy. Yep. Trust means we have set our hearts to believe in God in any situation. When we try to do things by ourselves without God, we can sabotage the peace that God wants for our lives. And when we panic and worry, rather than have faith, we miss out on some much needed peace. That's right, worry is the enemy of peace, mm. but God invites us to give him our worries and then let them go. Yeah, God is so amazing that he even gives us instructions on how to receive his peace. Our memory verse this month is, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. 
Philippians 4, 6. Yeah, when we are struggling with something, we can share it with God through prayer and then let it go, trusting that his plan is the very best for our lives. Mm -hmm. Let's dive into our lesson for today so we can understand more about peace. Possible to eat six saltine crackers in a minute? Or lick your elbow? We're trying out the impossible. Dang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. And I'm Brittany. We're seeing if we can fold this sheet of paper seven times. Okay. We have one. Right, so far, so good. We have three folds. I'm making an airplane. Six. Oops. And here comes the seven. <laughs> they say it's impossible, but they have to go at an angle. Wait, why is it so hard for you? This was seven. I, I think they, I think it's folded in half. But yours looks better. This is, this is more so impossible good. than that. I think I'm actually gonna get the seventh fold in. Here in the Loop Show, we say that life is like a roller coaster. There's ups and downs and even loops. And today we are talking about the dips. The valley. This is an episode for anyone who's ever asked, why does God let bad things happen? When sometimes life tilts into the impossible lows and circumstances get tough, it can be hard to find peace. Sometimes it can feel impossible. Five, six, it's not gonna happen. I thought I would be able to do it. I'm Christy and I can't fold a paper seven times. <laughs> um, when I was 12 years old, something pretty earth shattering happened in my world. My mom and my dad sat my sisters and I down and told us they were getting a divorce. And I didn't really know what to do at that point. I had no idea how my life was going to change, but I knew it was going to be a big change. God's peace is lasting. Know that. But what happens when you go through something terrible? Something happens to you that you didn't choose, that you can't change. What happens to peace then? It's like the valleys of life are an even harder place to find peace. How do you find peace when your heart is literally shattered in pieces? Sometimes we think we have to put on a smile, pretend nothing bad at all is happening. But when we bottle it, it doesn't make it go away. Part of God's peace is being able to say what we feel to Him and to others. There's a word for this in the Bible. It's lament. It basically means to admit the weight of the situation and respond sincerely. It's okay to say, this is breaking me. This is too much to carry. You can cry on your bed and you can cry out to Him very angry prayers. And He's not surprised. He's not daunted by our big feelings or us sharing them with Him. He wants us to come near. In fact, He says He comes near to those who are brokenhearted. He won't turn away. He won't leave. Nothing you could say to God will cause Him to leave you or love you less. It's okay to lament. It just might bring you some peace. So there's this challenge that says that it's impossible to eat six saltines in a minute. Is that true? It's like just six. Yeah, and I, I think it's bogus, so. Okay, well, I'll time you. I got it. Ready, okay. set, go. <laughs> oh, it's really hot. Um, you're halfway over, but mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. Without water. Here we go. You're out of time. Is it? You didn't do uh, it. No, I did it. No. Okay, so it is, it is impossible. I went this far away. Yeah. Okay, so maybe the salting challenge was impossible, but have you heard of the draw a six challenge? Mm -mm. What's okay. that one? Take your foot and make a clockwise circle. Okay. Now, 
with your hand, draw a six and see if you can do it without, yeah, without stopping and keeping your leg Am going. Am I doing it? Am I doing it? I cannot compute. <laughs> it's like I'm, my body's just glitching. I'm gonna say that that is definitely impossible. Uh, wherever you are, give it a try and uh, see if it is impossible for you yeah. as well. Okay, I've got one. Try putting your middle knuckle on the table okay. and lift your pinky finger and your thumb. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. No, okay. Now try your lifting up your ring finger. Okay. It should be so easy. Pretty tough. Ah! Love my hand shaking. Oh, man. Come I'm on. using all of my body strength to try to lift Are this you? up. Even if it's just a tiny bit like me. I you can it. do it? I can do it. Easy to the peas. Oh, my. This has to be what it's like to like try to lift Thor's hammer, <laughs> like if you're, if you're unworthy. All right, well, you guys try it at home. Okay, so some challenges are impossible. And some challenges just seem impossible, but the answers are just hard to find. Hey, well, what's up, guys? My name is Dylan, and I've been able to be a sponsored skateboarder for well over 10 years. Um, what that means is that I've been able to travel to different cities to skate competitions, events. I've had my name on skateboards and magazines and in videos. And as you know, skateboarding can be a little bit dangerous. And so, of course, that comes with injuries. One of my last injuries actually was a 10 and a half hour knee surgery. And while I thought recovery was gonna be easy, what I found out is for the next few months I wasn't gonna be able to walk. That I had to rely on other people to do simple things like go into the kitchen to get something to eat. And I remember just being broken at that time. I remember being hopeless because skateboarding is all I'd ever known. I didn't know what I was gonna do. The doctors told me I wouldn't be able to run, let alone skate, ever again. And you see, in that time, God decided to use people in my life. He used my dad, who would literally pick me up to put me into a wheelchair and make sure I was in church every Wednesday and every Sunday. I had the opportunity even to speak from my wheelchair at one of the youth group services. And it, even at the time where I didn't think God was there, he was using the season to show me the purpose and the path that he had for me later his peace really started to show up and that anxiety that I felt before, that nervousness, that uncertainty started to go away. And because I decided to trust in the peace of God, because I started to believe that his plan was so much more important than mine, I was able to do so much more after the surgery. Not only am I still able to skate again, but I have an opportunity to be in magazines again, to have my name on a board again, to be in videos and to be able to share the story of what God has done and how his peace ruled in that season. And so if there's one thing I wanna leave you guys with today, it's that God's peace, it doesn't end. It doesn't run away because of the circumstance or the season that you're in. It's always there, it's always for you. God's peace is there for you in any season and any circumstance and that is what we need to let rule over our hearts today. Some challenges truly are impossible. But some challenges only seem impossible. And that's because the answer is just hard to see. For example, you have your water bottle, you have your dollar bill. I challenge you to get that dollar bill without tipping or touching the water bottle. Okay, easy. I want this dollar. Ah! Okay, one second. Maybe I'll turn it. It's Ricky, not stop impossible. Me. It is not impossible. Okay. This is impossible. Okay. I'm gonna show you how. Okay. Okay. So take your dollar, and then you just start rolling it up. Wait, without touching the bottle, right? Yeah, you're just touching the dollar bill, and look at this doll. This bottle just slide right off um. the dollar, and then you have your dollar. And because I got it, I get your dollar. So I just make a paper airplane fly it over here. And you want me to fold it seven times? Seven. All right. Fold, now fold the dollar bill seven times. All right. I have another one for you. Okay. This one is going to test your knowledge of colors, okay? Okay. I want okay, to no show colors. you a card that has the name of a color on there. I want you to tell me the color of the word, but not the word. Okay? okay. Are you ready? Ready. Here we go. Blue. I was actually going for violet. Mm. Green, pink, red, orange, bottle. Oh yeah, very good. <laughs> All right. I very think I good. crushed that, but your turn. Okay. 
Yellow. Green. Green. Orange. Red. Yeah. Come on. Pink. Green. Good job. Okay, my brain hurts a lot. That was surprisingly more difficult, but it was not impossible. Sometimes we get the answers to impossible questions, and sometimes we don't. Hey guys, I'm Tommy. And today I'm not serving up gross food to our hosts or dancing around in a bear costume. I want to share some of my story with you, but it's not an easy one. See, when I was in the fourth grade, my dad sat me down and he took a deep breath and he told me that my mom had cancer. And unless there was a miracle, she wasn't going to make it. That was the first time I remember seeing my dad cry. And the second time was the day that my mom passed away. I didn't know God very well at the time, but I knew enough to be really, really angry with him. I felt robbed and I felt numb and it felt impossible because parents aren't supposed to die. Some people tried to comfort me by saying things like, it's all part of God's plan or everything happens for a reason. So God's plan was taking my mom. That's God's plan. Everything happens for a reason. That didn't make any sense to me. After my mom's funeral, I was sitting with my grandpa, my mom's dad, and he said something I'll never forget. We were just sitting there together, just quietly, and he was so angry at the injustice of outliving his daughter. He was hurt and he was confused. And I remember he just shook his head and he said, I just don't know. I don't know. And the weird thing was, I felt a weird kind of relief hearing him say that, that it was okay to not know, to not have the answers. I think for the first time, I was aware of God's peace. When we hurt, disconnecting from everyone and everything can be really, really tempting. But the peace that we're looking for comes from being around people and hearing their stories, stories of people who have similar experiences or encouraging words. They've gone through what you've gone through. You can encourage them or they can encourage you. They can remind you of God's faithfulness and you can remind them. God is perfect and he loves us and he's holding us and he's restoring us even when we can't feel it or see it. And he loves to use people to do that work. Eventually, God introduced our family of boys to a family of girls. I gained a new, wonderful mom and two incredible sisters. And all of the hurts and pains and struggles on each of our family's paths that we had been on that brought us together, it was part of our restoring, but it also made us stronger. We were better because God brought us together through all of our hurt and pain. We can trust God even when we can't understand. And when you're hurting, you can ask God to remind you of his truth and faithfulness. And don't try to do this alone. We need each other because God created us for community. I don't always know the answers, but I always know that God is still in control. When your heart is broken, try praying this peace prayer. Fill in the blank with whatever breaks your heart. Words like loss, death, divorce, tragedy, words like that. Here's an example. When my heart is broken by heart, God, increase your peace. Mend me with peace and give me trust. You are still in control. Amen. So we have one more challenge. Uh, you are challenged to make the highest number you can by only moving two of the lines. Okay. Okay. Um, 999 is the biggest number. Yeah. Very close, but incorrect. How? Okay, so 999, reset it to where it was before, 
which was 508. Just moving two. Just moving two. Top and bottom. Now we have a new number. What? Now we have 15,118. Okay, that's significantly big. I didn't even know you could make another number. We're not even done yet. If you shift your perspective, we now have... Oh, snap. 81,151. All right, that is significantly bigger. You had me beat there. You got one. Some challenges require you to shift your perspective. When there's dips in your roller coaster. When your heart breaks. Remember to ask God for trust in his faithfulness. God's peace is lasting and he is in control. And remember, nothing is impossible for God. Life is like a roller coaster. So don't forget to, to enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Now that you've learned the ABCs, we wanna give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your heart. When you say yes to Jesus, you are putting him first, making him the leader and Lord of your life. Are you ready? As a sign of support, let's all say this prayer together. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. I ask you to come into my heart and to forgive me of all my sins. I decide today to follow you and to make you the leader and Lord of my life. I believe it, I receive it, and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are so excited for you. Make sure to tell your Connect Group leader so we can celebrate with you and give you next steps. Ah, oh, what a great day to learn about peace. Don't you think, Sophia? I sure do. Our faith declaration this month is Jesus gives me peace. Anytime you begin to worry this week, practice telling yourself, God gives me peace. God gives me peace. Oh, what are you worried about, Charles? Worried? Oh, I was just repeating after you. Oh, God gives me peace. That's right. Yeah, uh, oh, are you worried about something, Sophia? Oh, no, why would you? Uh, I, uh, oh, I see how it is. Well, touche, Charles, <laughs> touche. Church kids, we will see you next week to explore some more wisdom about peace. Until then, don't forget, it's a great day. <laughs> To, to be a church kid! Yeah! Wow. Week two about these. Yeah. What we did today. Yeah. 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 Yeah.